Every day of our lives is potentially the day when we are involved in a serious accident. A few of us can't even make it out of the bedroom. Others don't make it down the stairs in one piece. A lot of us manage to cut or burn ourselves in the kitchen. And when it comes to do-it-yourself accidents, it seems there's no stopping us. Even if we manage to avoid an accident at home, there's plenty more ways we can kill and injure ourselves and others on the roads. Sadly, many of these will be children. And how many of us have had a near miss recently? Think. Slow down. And when we get to work, are we any safer? Well, statistically we are. But still far too many of us lose eyes or limbs. Fall from height. Get hit by moving vehicles. Or do stupid things which cost us dearly for the rest of our lives. But why do we risk being killed or severely injured by an accident at work? It's because we make bad decisions, often through rushing or lack of planning, and rely to a large extent on luck. Every fatality starts with an unsafe act, and according to statistics, one in two million unsafe acts will result in a death. However, on average, there will be approximately 240,000 near misses, 20,000 minor injuries, and 400 reportable serious injuries, leading up to a death. On the other hand, you can be killed on your first day at work, because no one can predict the outcome of an accident. Unsafe behaviour is a form of gambling. On many occasions we win, but when we lose, we can lose big time. We can lose everything. I want to tell you about an accident that had a big impact on my life. In my hometown, a scaffolder called Joe was working on a construction site about 10 metres from the ground when his mobile phone rang. So he stopped what he was doing to answer it. Hello, love. What's up? Now this in itself is an unsafe act when working on scaffolding. But as he was loosening the fittings on a guardrail and hadn't yet clipped on his harness, it wasn't the safest place to be taking a call. The egg gasket? Oh, you're kidding me. That was Joe's first bad decision. He could have left his phone in his locker or switched it off and looked at his messages during his break. But he didn't. Well, what's it going to cost? He chose to ignore an important safety rule that he had only been reminded about by his supervisor that very morning. Mobile phones. Do not answer your mobile phone while on the scaffold. Move to a safe place of work so you can answer the How phone. How much? Well, it wasn't good news on the phone, but it wasn't urgent either. And as he became more agitated, Joe inched nearer to the guardrail, which he had already loosened at one end. Get another quote. But suddenly he saw his supervisor across the site, ended the call and got on with his work. Hang on, I'll have to call you back later. His unsafe act was just one of two million unsafe acts where nothing else happened. If only that was true. Fortunately for Joe, or unfortunately as it turned out, his supervisor was called back at the last moment. So Joe carried on talking on his mobile. OK, but I shouldn't be on the mobile up here. What actually happened next was that Joe's mate Darren came along the scaffold and had to squeeze past him. Darren went to lean on the guardrail, but Joe suddenly remembered that he had loosened it. Darren gave Joe a bit of a ticking off and should have reported the incident as a near miss. But they were good mates, and it had never happened before. It was just one of 240,000 near misses that remained just that. Near misses. The type we've all had at some time in our lives. 
except it didn't quite happen that way. Darren and Joe were good friends. They'd worked together for years, but familiarity can breed complacency. Luckily, Joe's quick reaction saved Darren from falling off the scaffold when the guardrail gave way. It held enough at one end for Joe to haul Darren back, but at the cost of a painful landing on his knee. It was a minor injury, one of 20,000 minor injuries that never become anything else. A bit of first aid, a bit of sticking plaster, and a relieved friend who realises that it was his fault but is too embarrassed to report himself to his supervisor. I'm so sorry, mate. I've, I've never done anything like that before. You know that. But Joe didn't get away with it. His supervisor heard about the incident and conducted an inquiry. Joe was reprimanded by his supervisor and given a warning that his unsafe act would be held on record and any further breaches of safety would not be tolerated. Well, it will be recorded and it will last on your record for six months. Darren, I understand... With three children and a new baby to support, Joe could not afford to lose his job. But apart from a minor injury to Darren and a warning as to his future behaviour, the cost of the accident was very small. At least it would have been if that was the whole story. What actually happened that day is this. Joe did answer a phone call whilst he was in the act of loosening the guardrail fittings. Hello, love. What's up? He almost ended the call when he saw his supervisor. And Darren was pushing him to get a move on. But nothing happened to Darren. In almost all serious accidents, 85% of them could have been prevented by the person who had the injury. But Joe failed to see the hazard caused by loosening the guardrail while not clipped on. He didn't realise who might be in danger of an accident. He didn't think about the risk of answering his phone while in an unsafe position. And so there was nothing to prevent what happened next. Just see if you can knock him down. Joe broke both his legs, fractured his pelvis, and suffered a serious spinal injury. But after months in hospital, the doctors managed to put him back together again. He survived an horrific fall, but paid a terrible price. Apart from the injuries which disabled him for life, he lost his income, his freedom, and he couldn't even obtain compensation. In the subsequent legal action for damages, Joe was found to have broken his terms of employment. He had placed himself and others at risk by working in an unsafe manner, despite having been given clear safety instructions which he had signed the very morning of his accident. One bad decision, to talk on his mobile phone whilst working, ruined his life and that of his wife and children, who will have to get by on welfare for the foreseeable future. The medical costs of his accident ran into tens of thousands of pounds, with the mobility costs continually mounting. Had he remained a scaffolder for his entire working life, he could have earned over a million pounds. And the cost of preventing his accident? Nothing. Joe's employer did not have a case to answer for in terms of his misconduct. SGB was found to be one of the safest companies in the construction industry and trained their staff to the highest standards. They had carried out a proper risk assessment for Joe's job and given him a toolbox talk which included not using a mobile phone whilst working. Yet they were forced to pay out a record amount in compensation. And you want to know why. Everything about Joe's accident happened exactly as I've already described. He loosened the guardrail fitting. He stopped to take a phone call. Hello, love. What's up? Darren tried to hurry him along. He got a bit agitated. I want to make a decision right now. And he forgot that he had loosened the guardrail. See if you can knock him down. When he came crashing over the side of the scaffolding, I heard him scream. I looked up, and that was the last thing I ever saw.
You see, I was killed instantly when the board Joe was holding sailed beyond the safety fence and struck me on the head. And whatever the cost of Joe's injuries, they are nothing compared to mine. I have children who will grow up without a mother and a husband who will have to cope without me. I know what you're thinking. I was unlucky enough to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. A few seconds later and the board would have hit the path. A few seconds earlier and I would have passed by unharmed. The truth is, the few seconds that killed me were the few seconds it took Joe to answer his phone. That one unsafe action set in motion a roll of the dice that happens with every unsafe act, no matter whether it's at work, in your car, or in your home. Where the dice lands could change your life forever. So it's best not to throw it in the first place.